We welcome all of you this morning on this first Sunday of Lent. And if you're visiting with us, we uh, give you a warm welcome here this morning. This is a special Sunday where we're celebrating uh, baptism, which is why we have the baptistry ready here. So we'll, we'll be having uh, the baptism uh, after uh, the sermon. There is a part of the uh, baptism where there will be a responsive reading. It's, it's in your bulletin, uh, just so you know that. And also um, might be uh, on the screen as well. Got some announcements this morning. Some of the things I want to highlight is the, um, this Saturday is a very special time in life of the church. We're going to have uh, the Women's Fellowship are having a consignment sale, and uh, it's from uh, 8 to 2. The youth are selling baked goods, and if you want to uh, give donations or uh, baked good donations, see uh, Lindsay Diamond or Karen Sanchez, and that's from 8 to 2 this Saturday. I hope that we can come out and have a good time for that. Also, this uh, Monday, tomorrow night, uh, we are resuming Bible study at 7 o'clock, so we invite all of you uh, to come out to that. And you can check the other announcements that we have uh, in the bulletin. And do we have any other announcements this morning? If not, uh, before we have our opening hymn, let's just take a moment and greet your neighbor, greet visitors, any visitors that might be here, just have a time of fellowship uh, before we sing our opening hymn. <clears throat> Thank you for helping out. <laughs> no problem. All right. <clears throat> For me, I'm having surgery on Wednesday. Oh, oh on really? Wednesday. Yeah. It's not, it's not nothing serious, but you never are you, know. Are you going in? Uh... I'm going down to what I'm missing. I'm just having a cataract surgery. Oh, okay. All right. Want me to have it now? I have, and, and, and your name is, um, I can't remember. Um, I can't remember your name. Amelia. Once. Amelia, okay. Heavenly Father, we just uh, lift Amelia to you right now, Lord, as she has this uh, cataract surgery. We pray, Lord, that you would give her strength and healing throughout this surgery. Give her peace to know, Lord, that you're with her through this time. And uh, we give you the honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank did, you. Did you want me to mention it this morning? During... It doesn't matter. could uh, gather back together and let's turn to our hymnals to number 430 and please stand as we sing since Jesus came into my heart number 430 
Amen. Join me in the call to worship, the response of reading this morning. Uh, since this is Baptism Sunday, this focuses on baptism this morning. We gather this morning around water made ready for baptism. We recall Noah and his family turning from death to life as they face the rising waters with trust and obedience. We remember Miriam who watched her infant brother Moses in the water of the Nile. And we recall Moses years later leading the Hebrew people through the waters into their liberation. We remember God's people crossing the Jordan River into the Promised Land. And centuries later, Jesus entered that same river to be baptized by John. We gather around water that reminds us of God's gift of new life, water that reminds us of the historic quest for identity, water that holds constant before us the call to obedience, water that invites us to liberation. Today, we come to the water and in spirit wade in the water with those being baptized as we renew our covenant with God. Let us pray. Our gracious and kind Heavenly Father, what a privilege and honor it is to be here this morning. We thank you for the gift of worship. We thank you for the honor of worshiping you. We pray, O oh God, for the many people, Lord, who are not able to worship this morning for physical reasons. We also remember the ones who are being persecuted, uh, the persecuted church. We ask the special blessings upon them and your protection. Help us to know, Lord, more about the honor and privilege of worshiping you. We thank you for each one who's here this morning. We pray, Lord, that you bless this time of worship, that everything that we do, Lord, would point us to you and point us to the gospel of Jesus Christ and how we all need uh, the saving gospel. And on this first Sunday of Lent, help us to uh, sacrifice ourselves by making you, Lord, the center of our lives. And we thank you and praise you for all that you've done. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated, and the cherub choir is going to be singing.
We are going to talk about that. What do you think it is? What do you think that is? Yeah, it's a, well, it's like, it is kind of like a bathtub, isn't it? It's called a baptismal pool. What do you think? Right, Pastor? Is that the term? Baptistry. Some say baptism pool. But we are going to talk about that. Okay, first, who knows a guy named John the Baptist? Good. How about over here? Anybody know John the Baptist? No? We are going to talk about them. Did you know that he was Jesus' cousin? Yeah, she knows. Good. All right. Now, every time I say baptism, Bryce is going to do something. So you got to watch it, okay? Mm-hmm. You ready? John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were flocking to him. The way they crowded around John, like you're crowding around right now. Yes, they were getting really close to John. And they were baptized by John in the Jordan River. Now, this isn't quite a river, is it? No. Would it be super cold outside if we went to the river right now? Yes, it would. Might be a little bit of ice in there, right? Yes. So we are very thankful, and I'm sure Walter is too, and Pastor Marty, that we have something inside instead of going outside. Right? Yes. But they had the Jordan River outside. Of course, their climate is different than ours. It's a lot uh, warmer there than it is here. So they went to the Jordan River, they got baptized, and they confessed their sins. Now, what is a sin? We're getting to that. What's a sin? Does anybody know what a sin is? Yes. All the bad things that you do. Yes. And if you, what, repent, what does repent mean? Yes. Ask forgiveness, say, I'm sorry I did what I did. Then Jesus, what? He forgives you and he wipes the slate clean. So, John wore a camel hair garment. Has anybody seen a camel? No, you haven't seen one at a zoo? A camel, maybe? Have you seen a picture of a camel? Yes, you have. Llama, yeah, they kind of have the fur of a llama, you think? Yeah. Can you imagine wearing camel or llama fur on you as your dress or your shirt right now? No, and that's what John had. And he had a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and honey. Does anybody up here want to eat a bug? No. No. But John did. Is that silly? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But what about honey? You like honey, right? You think it's too sweet? Well, for some people it may be, but honey's good. Now you sit. So he wore a camel's hair, a leather belt, and he ate locust and honey. And John went out preaching. Now someone more powerful than I will come after me. He's talking about Jesus. I, John, am not worthy to stoop down and untie the strap of his sandals. I have baptized you with the water. But he will, Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Now in those days, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. As soon as Jesus came up out of the water from being baptized, he saw the heavens being torn open and the spirit descending to him like a dove. Now, what do you think about seeing a little dove come and fly up on top of somebody? What do you think of that? Do you know that happens to us when we get baptized, when we have Jesus in our heart? And a voice came from heaven and it said, you, talking to Jesus, are my beloved son. I take delight in you. Now, that means that God approved of Jesus. Now, what did God approve of that Jesus did? Does anybody know? Me. He got baptized, yes. I do. You do? Yes. 
And can we please Jesus too? Yes, not just by baptism, but what other stuff can we do to please Jesus and please God? What kind of stuff? Can we do? Yeah, exactly. Being good, treating others good, right? Sharing. Silly stamps. Silly stamps. Giving silly stamps to each other. Yeah, and and giving silly stickers. Silly stickers to each other. <laughs> exactly. And silly glasses. And silly glasses. And you silly you're just hats. all about being silly, aren't you? And silly hats. And silly hats. Now, how about if your parents do something, you do it the first time instead of ten times, they say the same thing. Ooh, quiet on that one. Should we do things the first time? Not just with our parents. God tells us to do stuff too. Should we do it the first time he says it? Yes, we should. Okay, I'm going to show you a picture. Good question, Benji. What is it? I know, that would be really bad, wouldn't it? Yeah, and don't No, that would be bad also. All right, this is my dad being baptized. Yes. You might have to come close. Hold on a second, Dan. I was too. I was seven when I was first baptized. And then later I did it when I was 16 because it meant more. But this is my dad. Now, how old is he there? How old do you think? That's my dad, yes. That's, he's came out of the water, and that is the pastor with him. What do you think? Does he look old or young? Nobody's going to say, does he look old or young? Old, yes. He, he was old. He was actually older than me when he got baptized. So anybody can do it at any age. You just need to know... Right from wrong and who Jesus is. Right, Pastor? Okay. So now, we're going to have a baptism later today. That's why this is open. What I want you to do is to come around. All right, let's see. How many kids do we have? One, two, three, four. All right, got to have some over here. Everybody put your hand in the water. Be very careful. Don't fall back, okay? Yeah, put your hand in the water. Come here. Put your hand in the water. We're going to pray. Benji, you want to go right there, baby? No. Come over here. All right, put your hand in the water. We're going to pray. You ready? Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for what you did on the cross for us. Thank you, Thank you that we can have you live in us. Thank you for baptism. Thank you for forgiving our sins. Thank you for everything. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, my friends, remember, every time you see water, think of baptism and what Jesus did for us. I know. Let's wash our hands. Come on over. Let's uh, read together the offertory statement as we prepare to give our offerings to the Lord from 1 Chronicles 16, 28, and 29. Let's read this statement in unison. Give to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory to his name. Bring an offering and come before him. I worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let us pray. Lord, as we give these offerings to you, Lord, we pray that you would bless these offerings to further your kingdom on earth. We pray that these offerings, Lord, would help the needs of the ministry that we do here. Uh, we pray, Lord, that uh, we would always have a heart uh, to give to you in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Let's all sing our offertory hymn number 499 and the ushers can come forward as we have our morning offering. Another time of our morning prayer, and in your bulletins, you'll see a list of uh, names that we need to remember in prayer this week. I need to give you um, some news here this morning. Uh, we've been, uh, we've had um, Betty Jane Berger on a prayer list for quite a while. We just found out that she just passed away uh, last night. So uh, we need to keep uh, the family of Betty Jane Berger, especially Harvey, uh, in prayer um, as he faces uh, his loss. <clears throat> also this week in the bulletin, you see we always pray for a church in the district. And this week we're praying for the Mooresville, the Mooresville Church of the Brethren. Uh, this is the church we're praying for this week. And the Lamb Peter Church of the Brethren is praying for us. Before we go to prayer, I just want to say that we had a really good 
A good service yesterday. It was a night of gospel music. Uh, we had a number of really talented um, musicians that were here. Um, Grace uh, Ziegler was uh, the MC, I guess you could say. She's one that uh, organized it. She did a really good job. I want to thank her for <clears throat> making the phone call to get all of those here. And uh, I just want to say that I wanted to share that joy with you this morning that we had that last night. Let's come to our God in prayer this morning as we have our morning prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ in this time of prayer. Lord, prayer is the only way that we can talk and communicate to you. We thank you for the privilege of having prayer uh, in the life of the church, but especially in our own individual lives. And Lord, as we approach the season of Lent, help us, Lord, to make prayer the center of our lives along with your word. We repent, Lord, of our sins before you. We know, Lord, that... Uh, we are all sinners in, in need of your grace and forgiveness. We thank you so much for the sacrifice Jesus made on the cross for us. And as we begin this 40-day journey of Lent, we know of the fasting and the wilderness that Jesus made. But he was led by the Holy Spirit, strengthened by the Holy Spirit. And as Jesus made that journey to Jerusalem, we pray that we would journey our, our own lives through the example and teaching of Jesus. Lord, we lift up the needs around us right now. We uh, want to remember Harvey Berger right now, who's dealing with the loss of Betty Jane. We thank you. Uh, for, for Betty uh, Berger and her life, Lord. We thank you for her commitment to the church. We pray that you would strengthen the family right now as they deal with her, uh, Betty's loss. Help us as a church, Lord, to <clears throat> be supportive of, of Harvey at this time. We pray for the other needs of the ones who are listed in the prayer prayer list, Lord, for the situation that each one faces, the challenge that each one faces. We lift them to you. Help us to know, Lord, that you have each situation that we face in the palm of your hand. Help us to have faith to know, Lord, that you have an answer. Help us to have faith, Lord, during times when we, we say our prayers, but we don't, we don't find an answer. <clears throat> Help us to know, Lord, that, that you're still there, that you have you have the situation in your hands. We thank you this morning for the gift of baptism. <clears throat> we pray, Lord, that this would be not only Walter's baptism, but all of us who have been baptized, that this would be a reminder of our own baptismal vows that we have all taken. Help us to see our need for baptism and the need to make of the Lord's center of our lives. We pray this week, Lord, for the Mooresville Church of the Brethren. We pray for the pastor of the church that you would uphold, uphold the pastor and the ministry that goes on there. We pray, Lord, that you take out any attacks from uh, Satan because right now many churches, Lord, are experiencing problems we just pray, Lord, for the Mooresville Church that you would keep Jesus the center of people's lives and the ministry there. Lord, we pray for our country, for the leaders of our country, that you would direct them that they would have uh, your agenda, your heart, <clears throat> so that they would properly govern and help us to know that we need to continue to pray for the leaders of our nation, that they would follow the example of Jesus. 
Pray for the church that we would be the light that you want us to be. Examples within our world, within others, within our community. We pray that you continue to be with us and lead us as we worship you. And pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Turn in the Bibles to our scripture text today. We're looking at Luke 4, 1 to 13. This is the passage of Jesus uh, in the wilderness fasting for 40 days. Luke 4, 1 to 13, and in your bulletins you'll see an insert sheet that you can follow along if you wish. Hear the word of the Lord from Luke 4, 1 to 13. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing. And afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command the stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you. And in their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he he departed from him until an opportune time. May God add a blessing in the reading of his holy word. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word, which brings us into a closer walk with you. Pray that we would be blessed by your word, which is spoken this morning. Pray that you would guide every word that I speak. May it glorify Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. Put yourself in the place of Jesus for a minute. How long would you last if you were out in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights without food and shelter? That's what Jesus did. Could you survive in a desert that long? Now that might be hard for us to imagine here in Pennsylvania. We don't have desert. In fact, we have nothing but rain and snow, it seems like, lately. But think what it must have been like for Jesus to be in the desert 40 days. And I want you to listen how this desert that Jesus was in, how it was described. Imagine that you're there. The desert that Jesus was in was near the Dead Sea. Now that should tell you a little bit about what was around the Dead Sea. The desert was called the Devastation. It is a rocky, barren place of limestone, and these stones looked blistering and peeling from dryness. The desert area is 35 by 15 miles. It was not something small. The hills of the desert were like dust heaps. Nothing grows there. It is hot to the point where your skin can burn. 
just like you're touching a hot oven. It would be like living in a vast furnace where nothing survives. Could you survive in the desert for that period of time? Now, here's the key to your survival. You are led into the desert by the Holy Spirit. You're led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your strength. Puts a new twist on things, doesn't it? God wants you there. Jesus went 40 days in the desert in the strength of the Holy Spirit. That's the first point. Jesus went into the desert. He went 40 days in the desert in the strength of the Holy Spirit. This is how the text begins today. Look at Luke chapter 4, verse 1, where it says, Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. One biblical commentator said, Jesus at this time in his ministry, in his life, Jesus had greater measures of the Holy Spirit than ever before. He was well armed in the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 2 verse 40, Luke chapter 3 verse 2, both mentions that he was strong in the Holy Spirit. And if Jesus was well armed with the Holy Spirit, how much more do we need to be armed with the Holy Spirit? As we begin the season of Lent, 40 days as Jesus was 40 days in the wilderness, We need to begin our need for the need of to have this Holy Spirit in our lives. The Holy Spirit needs to be part of our spiritual armor. First, how do you know if you have the Holy Spirit in you? A very important question in your walk. Do I have the Holy Spirit? Well, first, you must desire the Holy Spirit in your life. You must desire it. You must want it. You must ask for it. Jesus tells us in the Bible from Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, Ask, and it will be give, given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. That's the same concept that we have about the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need to ask for it. We need to want it. Seek it. Just like you want water in the desert, we need to seek that Holy Spirit. We also read how we are armed with the Holy Spirit at baptism. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, John the Baptist says, He who comes after me is mightier than I. He, that is Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now let's look at our baptism when it comes to baptism. We as brethren believe that when anyone is baptized, the Holy Spirit comes upon the person at that time of their baptism. The Holy Spirit comes, just like the the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus at his baptism. We baptize by trying immersion in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's important. We are all baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And when it comes to the Holy Spirit, we need to see that we're well armed. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Apostle Paul here gives us, tells us what the Spirit, the Holy Spirit does to us as believers. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses... For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So this is the main point we need to know about the Holy Spirit in the season of Lent. The Holy Spirit helps us when we are weak. The Holy Spirit helps us when we are weak. But not only that, not only when we're weak, but when we want to become closer to him. This morning, you might be here this morning and you might have something going on in your life right now, some trial, some tribulation, where you really need some help from the Holy Spirit. 
You might be entering into your own wilderness right now where you're not sure where you're entering. This morning's text tells us that we are all under temptation. If Jesus was tempted, how much more are we? And as Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit and strengthened by the Holy Spirit, how much more do we need to go in the strength of the Holy Spirit? The good news about today's text is that Jesus was able to overcome three temptations, which I'm going to go through in the wilderness. And if Jesus was able to do that, we are able to do that through the strength of the Holy Spirit. But in order to do that, we need to overcome the many tests and trials we face each day and with each season of life. This is to follow the pattern of Jesus. Look at Luke chapter 4, verse 2. Luke chapter 4, verse 2. He says, Being tempted for 40 days by the devil, and in those days he ate nothing, and afterward, when these 40 days had ended, he was hungry. Jesus' temptation was what? Jesus' temptation in the wilderness was called a trial with a beneficial purpose and effect. Now think about that. What that means is that this was a temptation that was not bad. It was actually good. It was a temptation that was divinely sent by God because God made it happen. The Holy Spirit was guiding Jesus during this entire 40 days. God was in control. And you may think, well, isn't this a little like overkill? Some of you might be thinking, isn't it kind of weird that that the devil and Jesus are having this conversation in the wilderness? How could and how could the devil make the claim that he's tempting Jesus? Well, notice what the devil was asking Jesus over and over again with his three temptations. He asked the questions, if you are the son of God, do this. You see, Satan didn't want Jesus to be the son of God. And Satan was doing everything in his power to make Jesus fall with these temptations, but it didn't happen. Jesus won in the end, as we see in Luke 4.13. He won the battle. Now we all need to go through our own testing period. I think every now and then it's good for us to be tested. It's good for us to go through our own wilderness, to go through our trials and tribulations and to see what we're made of when it comes to how strong we are. This was Jesus' extreme test to see if he was qualified to be the son of God. And the important thing to remember also is the timing of this temptation. This happened right after Jesus was baptized. Now that's kind of ironic because that was such a holy and good time. You know, Jesus' baptism, the Holy Spirit came upon him like a dove. A wonderful moment and baptism is a wonderful moment. But cloud nine never really lasts long. Jesus led, God led Jesus from his baptism, which was cloud nine, into his temptation. From being in the wonderful uh, feeling of the Holy Spirit to being sent in the desert where the devil was. But there is a reason for that. And it is true That the closer someone gets to the Lord, the more Satan will try his best to bring that person down. He does that by sometimes sending trials and attacks. He does that through compromise, something that looks good to us, but is not from the Lord. 
If we're not strong in the Lord, we're going to fall. So pray for your own spiritual armor this morning. Notice the first temptation the devil gave Jesus. Luke 4, verse 3. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. Oh, the temptation for food. The temptation for food. I find that interesting that food was the first temptation. Have you ever noticed when you're sitting in a restaurant, there are so many pictures of food all around you? I mean, it's all over the place. You see them in the doors, when you enter the doors, you sit, when you're sitting down in, in the booth, before you pay, you got these wonderful pies right there where you're getting ready to pay. Pictures all over the place. Enticing people to overeat and pay. Well, people's biggest, some people's biggest temptation is food. And that's what Jesus faced. Faced the same temptation. Look how Satan tempted Jesus with food. We are told by biblical commentators that the stones on the ground in this desert looked exactly like loaves of bread. Pretty crafty, isn't it? The devil is telling Jesus, hey, you know, you, you see that rock over there? See that rock over there? You know, you, you, if you're the son of God, you can just turn that rock into a delicious loaf of bread just ready for butter if you want it. Now remember, Jesus hasn't eaten anything for 40 days. And he was human. He was human and he was also divine. So he hungered like we have hunger. So it's a no-brainer that he was hungry. Jesus could have easily thought, you know what, the devil is right. You know, I'm, I'm powerful. I have this authority. I have this power of God to change that stone, that stone into a yummy loaf of bread. But no, no. If Jesus would have done that, he would have compromised. He would have been taking the advice of the devil, and you can't do that no matter how good it looks. So next time you're in a restaurant, and the waitress asks you if you want dessert, just say, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> Don't tell it to her, though. <laughs> Jesus came back to the devil with what the Word of God says in Deuteronomy 8, verse 3. Man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Well, think about that. If you are desperate enough to want to hear and know what God is saying in your life, you'll do whatever it takes to get it done. <clears throat> even if it means going without food, even if it means fasting. Which, by the way, fasting... It's not such a bad thing to do. Fasting does have some health benefits. It flushes out the toxins in our bodies. It's like spring cleaning. Spring cleaning your body like we spring clean the house. But you need to replace fasting with prayer and reading the word of God. And I admit that fasting is not an easy thing to do, especially here where we have fast knock donuts all over the place staring at us. I saw a segment on Channel 8 on Fat Tuesday. I didn't know that there are so many different kind of fast knock donuts, and they sure look good. But I believe it is important for us to go on our own fast every now and then. It is a personal decision between you and the Lord. It should never be forced, but it is good. This is what I did one time. I went, I went on my own fast one time, but it was not a total hunger fast. When I was a pastor at my first church in western Pennsylvania, I was pastor of this church for close to three years. And the church was getting to the point where not much was happening. Not much was happening in the church, and I was getting a little frustrated so I decided to go on a retreat and a fast. And I knew a local pastor who owned a retreat center in the woods. 
I called him up and asked if I could stay at the retreat center for two days. He said yes. He says he does that for part of his outreach. And on Sunday morning before the retreat, I told the people in the church that I was going on a retreat, a retreat slash fast for two days. And the only thing I took with me was my Bible and my notebook to journal, along with a few essential vegetables, foods. I didn't take any coffee, which was really hard for me. And I found out that those two days were really, really long. The days seemed to drag. The time seemed to drag. I had no TV. I had no coffee. I had no watching of the news and ESPN, which was hard. Hard for me. But it was necessary. I needed it. I needed that. Fasting is not easy. But there are times when we need it. There are times when we need to make prayer and reading our Bible the center of our time if we want to grow in our faith in the Lord. The second temptation the devil gave Jesus was all about power and authority. The second temptation was about power and authority. Luke 4, 5 to 7. Let's look at that. Luke chapter 4. The devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. This is how we need to address this temptation. What is your attraction to power and authority? Ask that. What is your attraction to power and authority? We all want some kind of power and authority. There's something within each one of us that wants some kind of power and authority. For example, do you want to prove yourself to others? Do you want to have influence The world says to you and me that you need to buy this. You need this in order to be successful, in order to have influence. You need to buy this. When someone convinces you that you need this to make you more powerful and influential, and you say yes, you just compromise to them. What did Jesus say to Satan? Get behind me, Satan. I think that's good strategy to use. Whenever someone's trying to sell you something, whenever someone's trying to sell you something, tell them, get behind me, Satan. I guarantee they'll never call you again. They know you're going to be a religious fanatic. We need to ask ourselves, who do we worship? Who do we worship? John chapter 4, verse 23, a very important verse. Jesus says, the hour is coming. And now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is seeking those people who really want to worship him. The third temptation the devil gave Jesus was all about proof. Proof. The devil was telling Jesus, prove to me that you're the son of God. Do something miraculous. Show me something miraculous that that shows and proves to me that you are the Son of God. He was saying to Jesus, do some crazy kind of miracle. And what the devil asked Jesus to do was crazy. Look what he told him to do. Luke chapter 4 verse 9. Luke chapter 3 verse 9. Let me get back there. Luke chapter 3 verse 9. Luke 4, verse 9, it says, He brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and say to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. In other words, what he told him to do is jump off a cliff and go down 450 feet. 
That's how long of a jump this was from the pinnacle of the temple. Now, what the devil was asking Jesus to do was downright crazy. Who in their right mind would ever jump off a a cliff 450 feet thinking God's going to save you? Now, the only one I ever knew who did something like that was Evil Knievel. And look what happened to him. He ended up breaking every bone in his body from his motorcycle. Jesus came right back to the devil and told him, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now, some would call this sensationalism. Sensationalism is when you try to win people over to God through miracles alone. Sensationalism says, I will believe in God only if I see miracles done. It's when you demand to see miracles happen in your life. That way you'll believe. William Barclay, a biblical commentator, says this, and I quote, God does not expect a man or woman to take risks of faith to enhance his own prestige. The very faith which is dependent on signs and wonders is not faith. If faith cannot believe without sensations, it is not really faith. It is doubt, looking for proof and looking in the wrong place. God's rescuing power is not something to be played and experimented with. It is something to be quietly trusted in the everyday life, unquote. And so this is how Jesus ended the temptation. This is how his temptation ended. Quietly trusting God. Quietly trusting God. After 40 days, the Bible says the devil left Jesus until an opportune time. He wasn't completely done with Jesus. Jesus did win, but the Satan was going to con- continue to make his attack so that he could not go to the cross until an opportune time. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, was tempted as we are, yet without sin. We as followers, we as a church, are called to place our trust and faith in him each day, each and every day. He knows our weaknesses, yet he is our Lord and Savior. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, which is with us at all times, strengthening us at all times. And Lord, as we have read how Jesus overcame temptation, pray that we would put our faith and trust in you and be strong in your Holy Spirit. Lead us as we continue to worship you and as we enter into our time of baptism. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we begin our time of baptism, let us begin with a word of prayer. O Divine Spirit, who was in Christ Jesus our Lord at the Jordan's edge, be now in us as we are at the edge of baptism. Open us to the heavens. We would hear your voice of acceptance and encouragement. We pray that what we do here this day may be pleasing to you. In Jesus', in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Having considered what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ, having prepared for the experience of baptism, I invite Walter Sedizan to come forward to be presented before baptism. Walter, you are this day being received into the Church of the Brethren. This family of the Church, the whole Church of Christ, offers you its rich heritage.
and invites you to share fully in its mission. You are this day being received into the Myerstown Church of the Brethren. It is our intent to be a true family of faith to you. We commit to you ourselves and surround you with a loving fellowship to be a means of grace, to offer opportunity to, for worship, study, and service. We anticipate your full participation in this, the body of Christ. It is a joy to welcome you. One of the happiest times in the experience of the church is when new life enters the community of faith. At this time, we're going to uh, prepare for baptism. We'll have a time of, of hymn singing. Test mine and Barb's hymnal knowledge. We want to ask you all uh, what hymn you would like to hear sing. So, hymn sing time. Somebody get your brown hymnal. Tell me what number you would like to hear. Oh, that's a good one. He leadeth me. We'll do the first and last verse. Victory in Jesus, another good one. We'll do the first and last.
celebrate uh, one today. Lord, you believe that Jesus is God's Son, and you receive him and trust him as your Lord and Savior. I do. Will you turn away from all sin, and will you endeavor by God's grace to live according to the example and teaching of Jesus? I do. Will you be loyal to the church and uphold the church with your prayers, your presence, your substance, and your service? I do. A positive confession of faith made before God and these witnesses, you're baptized in the name of the Father. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you and praise you for this wonderful moment, this holy moment, Lord, that water has made. We pray, oh God, that you would just continue to bless him and use him, Lord. We thank you for this decision that he has made accept you into his heart and into his life. We pray, O oh God, that you would strengthen him with the strength of your Holy Spirit, that he would live each day, Lord, uh, according to uh, the pattern and the example that Jesus lived. And we celebrate, Lord, Walter's decision as a church. We pray that we as a church would uphold uh, Walter in his decision. And, uh, Lord, that you be glorified through this pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If we could all uh, read the congregational welcome. glory and tenors and bass you have an awesome part on this one so let's stand up let's praise our lord and we have a new name in glory
page 430, since Jesus came into my heart. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you without blemish before the presence of his glory with rejoicing to the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord be glory, majesty, dominion and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Good to see you, Leroy. Oh, hey. How are you doing? 